As a hardcore Fujifilm shooter, there is a certain standard that I hold with other camera brands whenever I review them. The one important thing is their colors. At the same time, I know these cameras will never catch up to Fujifilm and their film simulations. Now I know what you're thinking from the title, that Sony is notoriously known for having the worst colors out of any camera brands. But me being dumb, I decided to give Sony another chance. Man, I just sound like that silly teenage uh, girl who's in a toxic relationship with her boyfriend like, but I can change him. <laughs> And this time I have the Sony a7C II and I'm lowering my expectations for their colors because I don't think they're as good as Fuji, but that doesn't mean they're bad. There are many things to like and just a few things not to like about this camera. And I'm going to go over them in this video, starting with the build quality. <laughs> The build and handling is great for me. I like holding this camera a lot. I like the fact that it is small and compact and it packs away nicely into my camera bag. It doesn't take up much space at all. But the grip is solid and I know for people who are well endowed, you're going to think this grip is too small for you. And if that's the case, I highly recommend you guys getting the small rig hand grip that I have on on this camera right here. You can see it right here. It's the silver one. It just matches with the Sony a7C II and it's silver and it just makes the camera look so aesthetically pleasing not only not only that it makes it just a little bit better to hold on to as well so i highly recommend that there are a few things that i don't like about this camera one of them is the electric uh, viewfinder and the magnification as well it's just too small and it's not as good as something like the fujifilm xt5 xh2 i'm not a fan of the lcd screen as well it's kind of hard to manage when you're outside in the bright sunny condition this camera only has one card slot and it's not a big it's not a deal breaker for me and i can manage with that but this could be a deal breaker for some of you guys moving on to the battery life it's really good i can get by with one battery however i don't like this new thing that camera manufacturers have been doing over the past couple of years they remove the battery charger from the box and it, you know, they're masking it as like, oh, I'm, we're saving the environment. We're so green. When we all know they just want to make more money off of us. So now you have to charge your battery through your camera and that takes up so much space. And then what happens if you have two or three batteries that needs to be charged before you head out uh, for a shoot? You're gonna have to remind yourself to check on that camera every now and then to see if that battery is fully charged within that camera. It's like so dumb. <laughs> However, that being said, I do have alternative batteries that provides a better solution than having to charge through your camera. And that is to get yourself a small rig Sony battery. It has a USB port C outside so that you can just stick a cable within it. So you don't have to uh, put in your camera, which is amazing. And it's, and it's more or less has the same charge like the OEM batteries. And I don't feel a difference when it comes to like it depleting faster or whatnot, like some of the other third party batteries that I've used in the past. Now I saw Brandon Lee using some of the small rig batteries for his Sony cameras. So if it's good enough for Brandon Lee, it's good enough for me. So if you're interested, I'll leave the links to the batteries down in the description below as well. Moving on to the buttons. I like how it's laid out. You got yourself you got the scroll wheel and, and many customizable buttons as well. You also got the spam dial with the three customizable bank at the top and the mode dial switch as well. So you can switch between photography to videography and SNQ mode. If there was one thing that I would like to add onto this camera, I would like for them to add a joystick. A joystick would have made um, navigating so much easier. If you are planning to change like your focus point on your camera, you need to do a different method. Getting a gray Sony a7C2, you're going to see some uh, scuff marks as opposed to getting a black one. So that is something to keep in mind. Overall, I really like the size of this camera. It makes everything look small and cute, but that is also lens dependent as well. So to appease to the folks to let me know that Sony full frame lenses are huge, I have to remind you guys of that as well. So the only lenses that I currently have for this camera is the Sony 50 millimeter F1.4 G Master and the Viltrox 20 millimeter F2.8. The 50 millimeter F1.4 attached to this camera makes it a very front heavy camera and it removes any compactness that this setup may have. The Viltrox, however, combined with this camera right here is great. Uh, this is what I used while I was traveling around England, walking around London, capturing the chaos. It was a breeze. I didn't get hand fatigued with this setup. It was very inconspicuous and no one looked at me or no one paid attention to me at all. So again, be mindful of what lenses to use with this camera. Now let's move on to the image quality. 
This camera has a 33 megapixel sensor. This is the same as the Sony a7 IV. So if you like the images coming from the a7 IV, you would like the Sony a7C II as well. I think the 33 megapixel is a nice middle ground. It's in between the 24 and the 45 megapixels. I like 33 megapixel because the file size are much more manageable and it's a lot easier on my hard drives. And when it comes to the images, this camera takes awesome photos. The, the straight out of camera JPEGs aren't as good as Fujifilm, obviously. And I've heard that some people say that, you know, you can make your own film recipes on Sony cameras as well, but I haven't really looked into it yet. That could be another route you take if you don't like shooting RAWs. I'm still getting a hang of editing Sony RAWs. The thing about Sony RAWs, uh, they are much harder to work with than Fuji RAWs. Colors don't adjust the same. I do like the images coming out of this camera and I think they're pretty good and I'm satisfied with it. So again, this is also a full frame sensor and coming from a Fujifilm APS-C sensor I like the full frame look the shallow depth of field is much more shallower on a full frame sensor obviously this is something you can't really tell once it's shared on social media but as a photographer who is inquisitive who likes to play with different cameras to try to get a better understanding of what other players have to offer I like that full frame look uh, there's more of that 3d pop and it's much easier to achieve than on my Fujifilm crop sets their body the skin tones have improved on this camera and although the skin tones aren't as good as Fuji I am satisfied with it low light images look good on the Sony a7C2 as well uh, during my uh, during my trip to London it got dark around 4 p.m so there was a lot of shots that I took that were at night and it's, it, it was with the Viltrox 20mm f2.8. Now an f2.8 lens isn't an f1.4 lens so you still need to crank that ISO like really high. So I was shooting around ISO 2500, 3200, uh, 6400 at times and I thought they all look great. The images look clean. There are some shots that I took even at ISO 10,000 and those are the times I would use Adobe AI denoising too, and Lightroom would clean it right up. So if you are worried about noise in the higher ISO, there are ways to work around these. Now having shot with the Sony a7 IV and now the Sony a7C II, I know how the images look and I can say it's awesome and I had a great time shooting with it. Let's move on to the video side. Now I don't use this camera for video, but it does have decent video specs as well. 10 bit color, 4K 60, but the caveat is that the 4K 60 comes in that APS-C crop. And although it's a crop, the footage looks great. It's sharp, it's full of details. I, I do love Sony's video footage and how crisp it looks. The footage looks really, really clean. It also has the dual gain native ISO. So you have ISO 800 and ISO 3200. So you're gonna get some clean footage from these base native ISO. Well, the video quality is great actually. So you can uh, use this to film content, get B-roll or even vlog because of the small size. I helped film some content for my YouTube friend Tom's here in the Algarve and I thought it did a decent job. Like I think the video looks great. Uh, the autofocusing was quick and snappy and it was just so smart. It just latched onto him. It just made my life so much easier. <laughs> There's also the reframing feature where the camera will zoom in uh, zoom in for you and it will track your movement making it look making it so it looks like you have someone that is following you around and filming you. Now you can obviously film the entire thing and just, you know, add that in post, but that just adds more work uh, at the end. So anything that can help with doing less work, such as this reframing feature, I am down for. So yeah, if you have a use for this, this feature is very cool to have in the back pocket. Let's move on to autofocus. The autofocusing is the best thing from Sony. It's not even close and not fair how many keepers that this camera gets. This is coming from someone who shoots with the Fujifilm cameras, the X-T5, the X-H2S, and the X-H2, which are the latest uh, gen cameras with the improved autofocus. But those cameras cannot touch Sony's autofocusing. Maybe the X-H2S would be able to, but that's about it. And that thing, I still feel like it's not as confident as, as this Sony A7C2. But in this new Sony A7C2, is a chipset that you can find in again the Sony A7R V and the Sony ZV E1 and the Sony A93 and that just makes the autofocusing that much better and it makes it so much smarter and does a good job at analyzing who's in the frame not only does it track your eyes if the person turns around the AI the AI chip tracks the back of your head and your body as well so the AI chip is really really smart now I had this one situation where I had the model running on the beach and I told her to just run while I was chasing her and man 
uh, that autofocusing did an excellent job keeping up. The eyes were in focus and sharp with precision, like it's crazy. I like using Sony's uh, touch to track uh, AF for video as well. Now this is one of those features that I miss while filming videos with other cameras because they implement this very well. The Panasonic S5 II had it, but it wasn't as streamlined and Fujifilm doesn't have it at all. And I'm so kind of like, I'm kind of upset that it doesn't. So get your shit together, Fujifilm. <laughs> this is something that they implement quite well and it helps you focus on your framing than having to worry about the focus of your shot if you move forwards and backwards. So this feature takes out the guessing game for me and it just makes my life that much easier. <laughs> There are some negatives that I mentioned earlier in this review, but I just want to reiterate them again. The EVF, it's crap. I really don't like it. And also, I don't like the fact that there's no joystick on this camera. It would have made the experience a lot smoother if there was. And then one card slot. One card slot could be a deal breaker for some of you guys. The paint finish is just coming off for the gray version. So if you're someone that gets freaked out about that stuff, I suggest just getting the black version where it's just harder to see that. Oh, I also don't like the fact that this camera is uh, maximum shutter speed is at 1 over 4 thousandths of a second. So if it maxed out at 1 over 8 thousandths of a second, that would have been much better for me. My Fujifilm X-T5 with its electronic shutter can shoot up to 1 over 128 thousandths of a second. I live in the Algarve and it's like super bright over here and if I were to use my 50 millimeter f1.4 g master i won't be able to shoot it wide open so we need something a little bit faster it gets super bright here even if i shoot it at the lowest iso wide open like it's still not enough the sony menu system is still confusing for me there is a lot that i'm not familiar with in here but this is just me knowing more about the fujifilm system i'm not as efficient using this camera as i am with the fuji so i do a lot more menu diving uh, than i should be this could be a mix of both me and the sony menu system overall the past few months my experience with this camera has been nothing but pleasant it's more positives than not i've used it for portrait photography i used it on my travels in both those situations it delivered the compact size is what i really value the most out of this camera i just wanted a little camera that could deliver powerful specs and you got the 33 megapixel uh, sensor you got the 4k 60 you get this AI chipset for autofocusing tracking all of this in this tiny little package right here it's freaking crazy, like holy crap, it's, man, it's an awesome camera. It stows away very nicely and quickly whenever I'm traveling, and that has been a pleasant experience for me. Going from one town to the next, or hopping on to the train and then hopping off of the train, hopping on the airplane, it was great not being bogged down by bulk and size. The small size also made it easier for me to maneuver to the busy streets of London. If you've ever been to London around Christmas, it's packed. But if you did, you are going to love carrying this around as opposed to like other full frame cameras, perhaps like the Sony A7R5 or the Canons or the Nikons of the world or any of those bulky looking full frame mirrorless cameras out there. It made the travel experience fun. I was able to take more pictures and it didn't feel forced. Uh, besides loving the size and the handling of this camera, I also like the images that it produces. It's sharp, it's clean, it has that full frame look that I like. The autofocusing is amazing. It's the best that I ever used. And it's so reliable with the way that it tracks the subject uh, because of that AI chipset. I'm confident enough to just hand this to the missus who is not a photographer and then just turn on the AF tracking for her so that she can take pictures and then I can confidently say that it's gonna nail focus on her behalf. <laughs> you can't miss with this camera. You're like, you really can't miss focus with this camera. Saying that, this camera is coming in at 2200 USD. And for that price, you're going to have to consider if this is worth it or not. Are you okay with paying for this price only to know that you're going to have one SD card and a shitty EVF and all the other things that I mentioned in this video? Can you live with that? Can you? For me, I can live with those trade-offs because I got something that is full frame, powerful, all in a small compact package. But yeah, what are your thoughts on the Sony a7C II? Let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in this camera, I'll leave the links to it down in the description below. And consider subscribing for more uh, content like this. Thanks so much.